Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we are reviewing this, the Logitech G502X Plus. It is a brand new gaming mice out of the Logitech camp and I'm super excited to review it. So big thanks to Logitech for sending me this for review. Of course, all links will be provided below to see where you can get it for yourself because straight off the bat, I'm gonna say it, it's a very, very good mouse that actually has become my go-to for all the gaming I'm doing at the moment. And even though I have a newborn, I am still doing some gaming. So let's talk about this mouse and why it's good and why there are some issues, because there always has to be something. Let's roll the intro and find out. The G502 comes with a lot of features. It has five onboard profiles for memory. It has a 140 hour battery. And that's interesting because it's at constant motion. So while you're playing is really the only time that you're actually losing battery. And what's even cooler, it has this thing called play detection, where if your hand is on the device, it knows you're playing a game and it will turn off the RGB. Of course it has RGB, but it'll turn it off to conserve power because at the end of the day, you want it to only be doing its thing when you're actually using it instead of when it's just sitting around. Well, then it can give it some lighting to look nice on your desk. It weighs around 102 grams. Interestingly enough, the white version, there is an all white version, has about a 0.5 grams left. I'm, I'm not sure why that is, 101.5, but it is what it is. Now on the other side, we have low friction PTFE feet. And this time it does cover a large area of the mouse, which is really good. And it does have the capabilities to have a little puck that is compatible with your power play at the bottom. And that is fantastic. Now, the most important thing is finally we have USB-C right here and that makes this mouse quite new. So at the end of the day, Logitech has been using the USB uh, micro standard for a long time and finally we have USB-C and I think it's a massive jump and even for Logitech who makes mice, that's a big step and I've been calling out for it for a long time but finally we have it. It is smaller footprint right here and it's hidden right underneath here which is great but if you have power play, again, you don't really need it. Now it has 13 programmable buttons and it also has this little button called, a, I, I guess I would call it a DPI reduction or something that lets you shoot a little bit slower. It reduces the DPI as long as you're holding this button. And what is awesome, it is interchangeable as in you can put in a flat piece that does not press the button and you can of course have the button. I have this off because my thumb covers it all the time and when I'm moving the mice, I do click it. So with those buttons, we have two at the top here and you know what, this area is a little bit thin for my liking. Uh, when I'm shooting around, I am sometimes touching these buttons. At the moment, they're set to nothing, so that's okay if I clip them, but that is a small area compared to the right-hand side, and I guess that's one thing I would say that's a bit weird about this mouse. On the thumb, you do have two buttons, and since I've been playing the new Modern Warfare 2, they have been absolutely useful for melee, and the other one is to mount onto a wall. It's been really good to hit that with the thumb. I do also, again, because of the thickness of my thumb, I do hit it quite a lot. So if you have really big hands, you're gonna find a lot of issues when pressing all these buttons uh, randomly. And I think that might get a little bit frustrating, but you should be able to get used to using maybe the tip of your thumb to hold it, but then you might not be able to use that DPI reduction button. This isn't a big mouse, it does fit my hand and I love the thumb rest over here, but it just means that I have to rely on it a lot more than actually holding the mouse like a claw or like some other people do it. So this is more of a palm grip with the pinky and the thumb, but of course you can grab it like this. I just wouldn't recommend it. This is a peculiar mouse for the right person. And of course that person is right-handed. This unfortunately is not a left-handed mouse. It has the light force speed switches, which is interesting because that means they're optical and mechanical. And that's giving you a very precise click. Let's have a quick listen. They sound really, really nice and I'm very happy with them. They are hitting all the shots that I am in game. It has a hero sensor, the 25K, which makes this mouse obviously fantastic. And of course, 
the biggest part is the DPI. So this DPI can go from 100 to 25,000 and also it can do a max speed of 400 inches per second and 40 Gs when moving the mouse, something that your hand will probably not reach at all. Now with DPI, this is a very personal choice, but I can say that this is mouse has probably the closest DPI settings to reality. Uh, if I move from a different mouse, I was able to assign a similar number and I actually had to tone it down because some mice go over the board and some mice do it under. It's not always exact and I can say Logitech is probably one of the better ones that has a DPI closest to the representation of the number that it is. So if you are changing from a different mouse to a Logitech mouse, keep that in mind put the number in as how it feels well for you when you play. And then once you switch mice to maybe another Logitech, you'll be able to use the same number. They have the closest correlations to each other at each mouse, especially with the 25K Hero sensor. Now, like with every Logitech mouse, there is zero smoothing, there is zero acceleration, and there is zero filtering, which means that you get the rawest of inputs into your game. So what's it like to use? Well, first of all, this mouse isn't the lightest mouse. So if you're looking for a light mouse, this might not be it, but 102 grams is actually peculiarly like compared to a lot of mice. It is heavier than their streamlined super light ones, which are about 63 grams, so it's almost double that, but you really can't feel it. And personally, I prefer the weight and these PTFE feet. They glide perfectly, but the weight allows me to control the mouse a little bit better. There is weight to stop the mouse when I want it to stop and doesn't go flying with the weight of my hand. Yes, I use a little bit more muscle and yes, I do get a little bit more, I guess, sore in the hand while playing with this mouse, but honestly, after three, four hours of gaming Modern Warfare 2 with just constant, you know, dog fighting in the ring, this mouse was fantastic, and I walked away feeling very happy with my performance. Now, apart from obviously fitting your hand and the buttons and the thumb buttons being really close to my thumb, I can't really say anything negative about this mouse. It is very, very good looking. And of course, it has really good design functionality for the right-handed person. Now, some people love this. There is a lock button here to lock the scroll wheel in and of course, unlock it so you can hear the little clicks, which are pretty satisfying. And the weight of the wheel is really nice and it spins for a long time. So if you just love spinning it and flicking across to other weapons when you're playing a game, maybe changing weapon, then this is a really good option, especially throwing a grenade up and down. It's a really good one to do. It can go left and right also which is good. So this has a lot of functionality for you to use. So what kind of gamer would I recommend this for? Well, I've been using it exclusively for first person shooters and the sensor and obviously the ergonomics have been great for that. The amount of buttons have really been utilized. Like I've actually using pretty much half of the buttons that are on this. The other two I have not yet, but it's possible this could be for a first person shooter or a single player first person shooter where there are lots of actions to do. I would say it would be great for an RPG player, especially something fast paced like Diablo, we're just clicking around all the time, this would be great and those buttons could come in really useful for certain magic spells that are used often. I would still say that this is a first person shooter mouse and that is what I'm going to continue using it for. I'm very impressed guys, highly recommended. $279 is a little bit pricey but if you see this on sale you will get a fantastic wireless mouse with great feet that's really glide. And I would really highlight and want to point out that the G440 Logitech mouse pad, the hard plastic one, is my favorite for this mouse. So friends, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Logitech for sending me this mouse for review. Links below where you can find that. And I'll see you all in another video. Bye.